Hello, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, and yes, this uh, talk will be in English. I promise I'm doing my best to practice my German, so maybe next year I will be able to host it in, in German. Uh, yeah, f let me first introduce uh, myself. My name is uh, Lina Ceballos. I am a project manager at the Free Software Foundation Europe, also known as uh, FSFE. And for those who don't know us, we are a charity that empowers users to control technology. And yeah, we believe that that's possible with free software. Uh, but today I came to talk about this uh, nice initiative called Reuse. So Reuse, um, it's an initiative from the FSFE since 2017. And it's basically a set of recommendations that um, aims to make licensing and copyright uh, display easy for everybody. It, makes it, uh, it aims to make it readable for uh, humans and machines alike. Um, it's also pretty uh, simple and very easy to verify. It. And uh, also it seeks to um, be integrated in already existing practices. So I will give a brief overview of what reuse is. Um, then I will show you with three simple steps how you can make your project reuse compliant. I will also do a um, demo here with a short project that I uh, prepare to show you how the tool and these specifications look like. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some ongoing developments of the tool and yeah, that's uh, kind of like the overview of today. But today, I want to start with some questions for you. So first, uh, please raise your hand who has ever programmed some code. Yes, <laughs> I can on you <laughs> the answer. Uh, this is also pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Who has ever released some of these codes uh, as free software? Yes, please. OK. Uh, I don't know if someone is, uh, is already falling asleep <laughs> or is uh, developing proprietary software. <laughs> Uh, and who has, ever, who has never been confused by how to uh, properly declare license and copyright information in your free software project? Okay, yeah. Uh, I know uh, declaring this kind of information, uh, it's a hassle. Uh, we know that. And that's exactly uh, what Reuse is uh, trying to achieve to make it simple but also fun for everybody. Um, so let's start first with the common issues or the common mistakes that we see um, in some uh, free software projects or how people are displaying this kind of info legal information. So first of all, there is some missing information about license and copyright information of um, own or third uh, party code. So sometimes we see some code and we are not sure under what uh, license is, it is or who the copyright holder is. Um, and then this is connected to this uh, other mistake or issue is that reusers of the code might, uh, may overlook um, these chosen licenses for all or for some individual files in your, in your project. And we know that uh, the terms under, your sof under which your software is uh, released are defined by the licenses. So this legal information is quite important and uh, overlooking this information but might become a little bit problematic. And then there is a little bit of uncertainty on how to deal with multiple licenses because uh, you all uh, have developed some code and then you know that a lot of free software projects are under many licenses. And then it is a little bit unclear how to manage this uh, information. There is also um, quite a lot of ambiguity with some licenses. So sometimes we, fi we find some uh, text of uh, GPL3, but then it's a little bit hard to know if it's the GPL3 or later, or if it's only GPL. Um, so it's a little bit ambiguous if it's not very clear, specified. And there is also some sort of conflicting uh, best practices because let's say again the example with the licenses, some people store this uh, text in the copying file 
other stored in the license file, other in the readme file, so it's a little bit, you always have to go and try to find where the license is and if there, if there are even more licenses. And that's uh, many of the reasons why uh, Reuse uh, started, to help you, uh, developers, but also to help users and reusers of free software. And how is, uh, how is Reuse actually helping? So we make it easy to find this copyright and license information because we're going to um, add this information in every single file of the repository uh, using a header. So you will see this information in every piece of code. Uh, and with this, we want to avoid silos because we want to store this legal information as close as possible um, to the repository or to every uh, piece of code. Again, as I already mentioned, uh, we want to make this information readable by humans, but also by machines. So if you, can, if you go and see every file, you will be able to understand and also the, the, the tool will be able to know and identify this information. And as I already mentioned, we're uh, really trying and um, yeah, putting a lot of effort of making um, licensing or dealing with this legal information easy, but also fun for developers uh, without uh, no matter the size of the, of the project, because we know that there might be a lot of uh, big projects, but reuse helps with this. So how does uh, reuse help with, this, um, with all these issues? Uh, it's really three simple steps. I will go one, one by one, and I will also show you in the demo how this works. But then first, you just choose and provide the license or the licenses of your repository. We, of course, encourage people to select uh, well-known and recognized uh, licenses although we know that you can also create your own license. Um, the second is that we're going to add this copyright and licensing information to each file of your repository. And third, we're just going to confirm that your project is reuse compliant. So let's go step by step. So the first one is to choose and provide the licenses. So let's say you select the GPL3 or, uh, only. So you're going to save uh, the license text of this file in a directory that we're going to create that is going to be called licenses. So all the licenses that you are using in your repository, either for the whole project, for the pictures, for the documentation, is going to be stored in this directory. So people who go and check your project are going to know what kind of licenses you're using. And then you're going to name this file um, after the SPDX license identifier, because as I already mentioned, Reuse is integrating already uh, some best practices. So we are using uh, the SPDX license identifier. Um, so in this example, you can see that we have the directory called licenses, and then our GPL three or later, it's uh, safe under the SPDX license identifier, like the license name of um, this specific uh, license. Uh, one important thing here is that uh, Reuse not, uh, doesn't support yet license compatibility. So uh, if you have any questions about uh, your project is licensed under a certain one and then you want to use or reuse something from another license and you're a little bit unsure if they're compatible, I mean, first of all, I think there are a lot of, uh, quite a lot of tools to check that. But we also have a licensing question uh, mailing list in which we uh, help developers with these more uh, legal oriented issues. So you have to be aware of that. Uh, the tool is not gonna warn, like, does not gonna make any warning on like if there is some incompatibility uh, regarding licenses. So we already got the licenses, and now we're gonna add the copyright and license information to the files. So we're gonna do it through a header, who's going to look like here in the example. So for the uh, license identifier again, we use the SPDX tag and the uh, license name. And then regarding the copyright text, uh, we again encourage people to use the SPDX file copyright text. 
this tag, but if you already in your project have uh, the copyright or use the symbol of the copyright, it's also fine. The tool will be able to identify it. But regarding the license, uh, yeah, only the SPDX license identifier tag will be at, um, recognized by the tool. And then I know that by now you might be wondering, uh, I mean, in my project there are some, co some files that I cannot comment, like images or some binary files or JSON files. So for this, we have two uh, alternatives. The first one is to create a separate dot license file for this specific file. So again, in this example, we have uh, the file of a cat, the image of a cat. And then what we're going to do is just create a dot license that we're going to name after the file, as you can see. And then in this uh, separate uh, license file, we're going to add the legal information. So we know now that the cat was taken, or the copyright holder uh, of this picture is a great artist, and that the, cat, uh, the picture is licensed under the CCBY4. But now I know you might also be wondering, like, I have a project, and my project has 1,000 pictures, and then creating 1,000 separate files for this might be a little bit um, of a hassle and also not a good idea because we uh, double the size of the project. So we have an alternative for this case that um, there are some ongoing developments. I will talk about this um, later on. But we have this depth file file that we're going to store in a directory called .reuse. Uh, the depth file, uh, it's a Debian project. We're also, again, uh, integrating already existing practices. Uh, and then in this case, you can see that we just select a whole directory because we are not, we are sure that this information is correct because this is the downside of this uh, alternative is that you might overlook some pictures that were not, um, that the copyright holder is not this person or is uh, under different licenses. So if you're 100% sure that you know the legal information of this, uh, then you're going to use it, and then you're going to tell that the whole directory of images uh, is under uh, this license, and the copyright holder is great artist, so yeah, the copyright holder. And the third one is that we're going to confirm that uh, our project is reuse compliant, and we have a tool for that, a linter tool, that uh, runs pretty easy, it's quite fast, and then it's gonna scan your project, and it's gonna identify it, what licenses you're using, um, if there are some files that are missing, some license information or not. So in this case, our project is reuse compliant, so it's all good. Uh, yeah, so these are the three steps. Now I would like to show you how the tool uh, works. So for this, I have prepared this project. It's pretty small, <laughs> so it has some code, it has some images here, uh, it has some, we can see that it has some copying files, so we have the uh, GPL version three. We don't know which one it is. Um, but yeah, so let's start it. Let's say I am, uh, I have already this. Uh, I am the, the owner uh, and the, the copyright holder of this project, so I'm gonna do the whole process. So first, I'm gonna scan my project to see how it looks like. So we're gonna use our command reuse lint. And then here, reuse del2 which will show us, you have these files, and zero of them have this legal uh, information. Um, so we're gonna tell the tool to help us. So we're going to use the reuse add header command to add uh, these headers. So I'm going to start with the, source, with the code. So I'm going to add to the whole bean directory and to this source. So let's run add header. And then we're going to start with the license. So uh, I know that my project is under the GPL tree or later. And then uh, we're going to use, uh, sorry, the copyright. We're going to specify, so Jane Doe. 
is the copyright holder. Um, here, if you don't specify the year, then the tool is going to add the current year. Um, so I want to specify that the year is uh, the year of the first publication. So I start this project in 2012. So let's add uh, the year. And I'm going to tell the tool to which directory. So please add it to the whole bin. And also to this directory. So now the tool automatically creates the headers. So if I go here, maybe it's a little bit small, uh, but then you will see that the headers are there. Uh, and the tool is able to identify the syntax as well. And then, yeah, I just add this header to, I don't know, 15 uh, files in three seconds. So we will check again how the uh, project looks like. So now it recognizes that 13 of these uh, files have this information, but we're still missing some. So within those, uh, we're still missing the image files. So let's ask our uh, tool to add. Uh, again, this. So we're just going to use the same uh, commands, but then the pictures were taken by Dave, though. And um, yeah, the year was 2013. And um, uh, yeah, in this case, I'm going to also change the license because these pictures are under the CCBY. Four. So we're just going to change this. And yeah, the year. And then we're going to tell the tool, uh, yes, please add this to all the image in um, this directory. So yeah, the tool already did this. If we go again, we will see that the tool has created this individual uh, dot license. And then if we open, then we can see the information is there. OK, yeah, so we are almost there. Let's check once again how the uh, project looks like. We still have uh, three more files. I'm going to add uh, the header to the make file and the readme file, because the git ignore, I'm going to briefly explain it uh, later. So let's just add the same uh, license and yeah, Jane Doe is also the copyright holder. And the Britney. Yeah, so if you go again, then you will see it's, uh, it's there. The Mac file again, it recognizes the syntax and it, it creates the comment header. Uh, so for the git ignore, uh, I mean git ignore is like an insignificant uh, file, so technically it's not copyrightable. But uh, the idea of reuse is that uh, the whole repository, uh, every single file has uh, this information. So you can, you have two options. You can either uh, license it, license it under the main license of this project, so the GPL3, or um, I mean, nothing's going to stop you for doing that. Uh, or you can also put it under the public domain. So we can do that. Uh, if we go here, then um, let's just put it under the public domain. So let's use the, uh, yeah, CC0. And then, yeah, I'm just going to change this, Jane Doe. Let's keep the same year. And then just tell the, um, the tool, please, add it to the git ignore. And then, yeah, it would add it now. So now, technically, all our files have this legal information. So let's see how the tool reacts. So it's still telling us that it's not reuse compliant. And it's actually telling us here that there are some misses, missing licenses. So we know that we have uh, used these two licenses. And the text of the licenses are not still um, are not in the repository yet, you can see. But the tool will also help you to do this. So with uh, our command reuse down, download all, um, the tool will basically download all the licenses that you have used. 
and then if you go to the root of the project, then you can see that the tool has created the licenses directory, and the three licenses are stored there. And it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So if you scan it once again, it will tell you, congratulations, this project is reuse compliant. So yeah, I mean, this is a very quick and simple example. I know that in reality, it's not that easy. But it was, an, uh, like, it was meant to show you how the tool works. Uh, and you could also see that we save a lot of time. We did a lot of things, uh, thank you, thanks to the tool. So let's keep talking about a little bit uh, the reuse as a whole. So the components of reuse are this set of best practices. Uh, so the specifications that I have mentioned already, the licenses directory, adding uh, headers to every single file of the repository. Uh, because we are aiming to make reuse a standard. So the more projects implement reuse, the easier it's going to become to first identify this information and then second to just implement it as a standard um, practice. We have the helper tool uh, that I just show um, a little bit how it works. Uh, because uh, yeah, it aims to support developers in making their projects reuse compliant, so it really helps. There are a lot of commands, and it's, there is a lot of ongoing development to make it better, of course. And there are more features that probably you know, you guys that are developers know <laughs> how to use better. Um, and then the, we have also a tutorial and an FAQ, uh, because we are uh, trying to lower the threshold uh, to for people to get started with reuse, so we our tutorial is pretty much uh, explain pretty much what I just did, um, and then we also have some FAQs, uh, an FAQ to answer a lot of questions regarding the tool, but also regarding some legal questions, a little bit more advanced questions. So there you can find uh, maybe the answer to a lot of the questions that you might have uh, now, if I'm not able to reply, to answer them after uh, my presentation. But yeah, the idea is that pretty much everybody can implement reuse and everybody can, uh, uh, yeah, can make a project reuse compliant just by checking the tutorial and also by having this FAQ available. And then we also have our API, which, uh, you can also find through our reuse.software page. And then there you can, once you have done your project, uh, you have made re your project reuse compliant, you can add it there, you can register your project, and then you will create, the API will create a um, dynamic budget batch that you can put in your project. So you can add it in your readme file, and then in the future, uh, people who visit your project knows that uh, will know that uh, your project follows the specifications of uh, reuse. So we are also now um, encouraging uh, projects to, to register because then we can also know how many projects uh, have been using these specifications. So a little bit about what special, what is special about reuse. So again, we have this directory called licenses, where we're going to find all the licenses that you're using. Um, and therefore, it's also easy to identify if there is some incompatibility toward, like, between them. Um, and it's, again, easier for um, users and reusers to spot this information very quick. Um, again, every file will contain this legal information. So we'll add the SPDX copyright and uh, license identifier tags. So it will become, again, way uh, easier to track, uh, to know what the license of a specific piece of code is. And we have some alternatives for uncommentable files, as I already uh, showed. So we have the dot license or the dep file file. And most importantly, we're going to make less ambiguous uh, the display of this information because we know exactly what license has been used 
Um, and then we also know for every piece of code what the legal information is. So now let's talk a little bit about the um, ongoing developments of the, of the reuse. So first of all, the tool that I, I just showed um, is uh, seeking to improve uh, itself. Uh, our uh, team of developers are really constantly checking the feedback and also trying to find uh, issues or yeah, bugs that are in the tool to make it easier um, for everybody, as well as the API. So we're changing uh, the documentation uh, and really actually improving improving it uh, as much as we can. That's why um, the feedback from the community is so important and the feedback from developers. You are the ones who are actually using the tool and then it's important for us to also know how you feel about it, what, it's, what could we improve. Um, and yeah, so again, the more projects uh, use, reuse, the more, uh, the better we will get because the, the more feedback, feedback we will also get. And then uh, the specifications uh, are also changing and improving. So here I would like to uh, mention a little bit the dev file file. Uh, we are trying to change it a little bit for a YAML file because it might be more flexible. Um, but yeah, this is uh, an ongoing process. Uh, but the whole idea would remain. So we still want to offer um, projects with a, like a big size to be able to display this information in a more um, in an easier way instead of creating an individual file for every file for every of these uncommentable files. Uh, there is also an ongoing development on the on some snippet uh, support. So if you have a snippet in your code, then you will be able to declare the legal information of this specific one. Um, so yeah, that's also in the pipeline. And yeah, we are working on some other changes in the queue. Um, the tool uh, has, uh, the version 1.0 one, uh, one has been released some weeks ago, and now we are immediately working on the version one, uh, one because there is still a lot of feedback going on. But uh, yeah, this is for yeah for the future. Uh, and again, uh, we're trying to integrate uh, reuse to like in like make it better to integrate in uh, already existing platforms and also in other initiatives. That's why we're, for instance, using the SPDX uh, tags. And then, yeah, we're trying to make it better so it really doesn't become a burden for, for you guys to make a project reuse compliant, but they can, you know, make a whole use of the whole ecosystem. Because in the end, that's what uh, free software does, right? It can help us to improve uh, through collaboration. And then uh, spreading the word, which is basically what I'm doing here, showing the tool. Um, um, I'm kind of, kind of impressed that uh, a lot of people don't know about the tool. Um, and honestly, I feel that it's a tool that actually helps a lot. Um, and I know that it might uh, sound a little bit ex uh, yeah, like a burden to make a project reuse compliant even more when your project is big. Uh, but I mean, I think in the long term, uh, the, the benefits in the long term that this will have are, you know, way more. Um, so yeah, we're just trying really, really hard to make it easier every time uh, for you to uh, make your project reuse compliant. Um, and then, yeah, with this, I would like to talk a little bit about our activities around reuse. So for instance, um, uh, we are also working with the Next Generation Initiative, uh, also known as NGI, which is a European Commission uh, initiative that it's uh, trying to shape the future, like uh, the, the future of uh, the Internet of the future. And then we're helping a lot of these small projects to become reuse compliant. Um, yeah, some of them are not uh, small at all. So yeah, this. Uh, our work there has been uh, quite also 
um, good. Uh, we really um, have been successful in implementing uh, reuse in a lot of these projects from the NGI. Um, we recently, last year, um, released our reuse booster, which uh, is trying to change a little bit the workflow. So we are now approaching projects to help them to become reuse compliant. So we are kind of establishing a closer communication with the projects because, again, we want to make it as easy and smooth as possible. So we're trying to identify and understand uh, their workflow and their policies and how they you know, develop their project. Um, and then we are working closely with them to help them um, implement and reuse. So, for instance, um, Curve has become reuse compliant lately in the framework of the reuse booster. And then also GNU Health has decided to implement reuse in all its uh, components. Uh, it's also a big project, so it's an ongoing process, but the wheel is there. And um, yeah, so our team is really trying to work closely with projects. And um, they, in the beginning, Reuse Booster was aimed uh, for projects to reach us out, to t tell us to help. But now to tr we're trying to identify these uh, interesting projects that we could um, help with Reuse. And then we also have, um, as I already mentioned, the license questions. So, uh, so we have a mailing list for that. If uh, you have any questions on your project regarding some legal uh, issues, uh, we will do our best to try to help you with that because, as I already mentioned, the tool doesn't really support that. Uh, but in our team and also in our community, we have lawyers or, or like legal experts that can help to solve these um, questions. So this is kind of like a whole umbrella of activities around, uh, yeah, reuse. So now talking a little bit about uh, who has adopted reuse. So in our API, we had already more than 1,100 projects registered. So we like to believe that is more, and some are haven't registered yet. So I mean, this is quite a big number. Uh, and that's why sometimes I'm a little bit um, surprised that people don't know uh, uh, the reuse, and we're actually working on uh, promoting this uh, tool more because I think it will really benefit the whole free software ecosystem. Uh, as I already mentioned, with the next generation internet, we have more than we have helped more than 100 projects there, um, and then yeah, we also try to make it as uh, easy as possible for them. Uh, in terms of uh, community-oriented, so we have KDE and its frameworks, and then Reuse is also implementing in their licensing policy. So basically all the KDE frameworks are following the Reuse specifications. As I already mentioned, Curve has uh, recently become Reuse compliant. Um, and yeah, Canoe Health, which is uh, in process, but I'm really looking forward to see that. Um, in the, from the corporate side, uh, we can also see reuse implemented in the policies of Siemens, and Huawei, SAP, LifeRay, LF Energy. Uh, the kernel of Linux is partially uh, following the reuse specifications because of the <laughs> size. But yeah, this is also quite exciting. Um, yeah, and then the question is if you and your projects want to implement reuse, uh, want to follow the reuse specifications. So how can you guys join? Um, for reuse, we also have a mailing list where we discuss things when we, um, some people charge some questions or things that are not clear. So you can always sign uh, up there to join the discussion in general. Uh, again, you can make one or two or all of the projects reuse compliant. Um, you will find all the information on our website, reuse.software. And there, everything is connected, the tutorial, the FAQ, the API, and yeah, etc. cetera. Uh, you can integrate reuse into your community. Again, you can also share the, spread the word, tell 
that you attend this very interesting talk in Frostcon. Um, yeah, and yeah, just make more and more people aware of uh, uh, reuse. Uh, you can also contribute with code. Now that you all have developed some code, uh, I mean, free, uh, reuse is a free software, so it's, uh, it's hosted there, the code is there, you can see. You can always uh, help us improve it. So feel free, because uh, the more, again, the more people help us and the more people give us um, feedback, the better it will get. And you can also help and guide others to adopt reuse. Um, I mean, using the tool is pretty easy and it's pretty straightforward. And once you understand how it works, you will be able to help others and share the word. And yeah, I mean, this is really, it's a very easy uh, tool. Even for me that I'm not a developer, it's, uh, you know, it's quite user friendly, I have to say. Um, and yeah, with this, I would like to thank you uh, and also thank all our FSV supporters because they help us uh, to and they uh, enable our work. So this is an invitation if you're not to become part of it um, in fsfe.org support slash support. Uh, all is uh, welcome. And yeah, with this, I will finish my presentation. Uh, these are the sites and this is also the mailing list and our uh, Git repositories with the reuse and also our um, yeah, FSFE uh, repository. So if you have any questions, uh, I will be more than happy to take them. Um, yeah, and otherwise, thank you so much for the attention and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have also some tools for developers, uh, so you can implement this like a, a pre-hook. Uh, so whenever you're gonna implement new code, then uh, it will identify if it's missing some uh, some of these specifications. So yeah, in the reuse.software, you can find there is a specific uh, page for that where you can find also like, how to implement it. Uh, because, yeah, again, we, we try to make it uh, easier. And also, I mean, if you make your project reuse compliant, then you will have to check and check every time. But with this, uh, yeah, it will make life easier. So, yeah, you can find it in the, in the website. Uh, should, sorry, should we take the, yeah, I think we should, we should take the questions with microphone for the recording. <laughs> sorry. Or mind uh, um, when we manage security information and also license information in the SPDX format so that they don't destroy each other when I use a reuse tool um, yeah I think I, I yeah I think I wouldn't I, I'm not very familiar with the with the security um, features of uh, SPDX so I think I cannot really answer that uh, that question but Here's my email on, on the slide. Uh, please feel free to remind me, remind it again, and then I will check with our developers uh, that are a little bit more uh, close to that, and then I will come back to you with that, yeah, answer. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, does anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, maybe <clears throat> do you have uh, an additional service to find out which license I actually need uh, to my files? Um, so, like you, you mean what kind of license you should uh, use for your code, depending um, on your needs? For my code, for my pictures, for something in my project, uh, something like it has some questions, I answer them, and then I can see what, which lessons I actually need. Yeah, okay. 
I mean, I would say that there are some tools <laughs> that do that uh, because uh, every time I work with that, I'm surprised by the amount of tools that uh, have been developed on that regard. I personally don't know any, uh, but on our FAQ, we have, uh, for instance, these kind of questions like, I have these pictures, what license should I use? So we try to recommend to use uh, the most common ones because it's also easier for reusers to they already know the license and they know the terms and the conditions. Um, so we tend to encourage people to use the most common ones and the most well-known licenses uh, for code or for pictures. So on our FAQ, you will find some of these suggestions. Uh, but if you have any specific questions regarding like certain terms of conditions that you want to use during, like for your whole project, you can always ask in the licenses questions and then we'll be more than happy to help you, to guide you uh, there to have like a more closer um, help from us. Uh, but yeah, regarding a tool, I am not very familiar with any, but I would say there, there might be, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I can also take it. Thank you. Um, do you have any hints how we should manage a project with many authors? In the example, we saw a project with two authors. And a typical project, for example, has 30 authors or more. And uh, if an author changes one file, then he's already one of the many authors. And mm -hmm. this continuously changes. And the most easiest way would be to take this information automatically from Git and add it to the files. Is there any uh, API uh, for this? Yeah, I mean, from what I know, uh, I think there, must, there are some um, ongoing com uh, conversations with uh, Git, uh, I mean, GitHub, let's say. Uh, but in this specific qu uh, case, we would recommend to, for instance, uh, as a copyright holder, make, uh, I don't know, your project, I don't know, reuse tool, contributors and then in a uh, in the root of your file of your project you will specify who the contributors are so you will list them um, and then if someone adds something then the person would add him or herself to this uh, document and then you don't have to change the header every time but it's just like a let's wrap it up by just mention contributors of the project but then you will have to make sure you specify who they are. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay. Then I, uh, yeah, I'm glad everything was clear and thank you so much for the attention and if you have any questions, we also have a booth from the FSFE. You can always go there, reach me out. My email is there, uh, contact at FSFE as well. Um, yeah, feel free to reach us out uh, and if you have any uh, questions of need in terms of uh, legal issues, again, our mailing list is open for you. Thank you.